rinse it off. Okay, show me your one single homework question on your table. Where's B? Okay. Who? Then who's that over there? So one absent D. What happened to her? I think she is Huh? Okay. What's your question? So do you know what's happening? Don't know what's happening. Who are those absentees from yesterday? Okay, uh, today we are going to continue with completing the square. Have you watched the video from yesterday? You see, uh, this is how it's going to work. I will not be waiting because it is not fair for the rest. I cannot reteach everything either because it is not fair to the rest. You have resources given to you in the form of the video of the lesson uploaded yesterday. So it is now your duty, it is your responsibility to catch up from yesterday's lesson as well as today's lesson. Now for the rest of you, try 9B. Let's go through it together. So this is our question, class. First thing we have to check, coefficient of x square is one. Let's continue. So let's copy down the first two terms, the x square term and the x term. x square plus three x. Now there's this one over here. We're gonna set it aside first. Let's put it at the back. It's not crucial at the moment, okay? But we cannot forget about it. So x square plus three x. I need to add a certain number that is divided by two and I have to square it. And I need to subtract it away again in order for the equation for the left hand side to be equal to the right hand side. So this over here is, a, is known as a zero pair. You add it, you subtract it, it's actually they come in a pair and their value is zero. They cancel each other out. Okay, so what is in this numerator over here? What should it be? Three. Can I have a convincing answer from everybody? Three. three. Where do we get three from? Exactly, the coefficient of x. In this case, it is positive 3. Okay, then we realize that, hey, uh, if I were to expand this, sorry, if I were to combine these three terms, I will get a perfect square, which is actually x plus, how much? 3 over 2 square minus 9 over 4 plus 1. All right? Okay, that is for these first three terms. Now, let me just do a quick side working. Why is it that um, these three terms actually give me x plus 3 over 2 squared? Okay, some side working. Now, if in sec 1, if you're told to expand x plus 3 over 2 squared, this is what you do. Oh, uh, x squared 
plus 2 times of x multiplied by 3 over 2 plus 3 over 2 squared. This is what you would have done in set 1, isn't it? Okay, that is simply expand x plus 3 over 2 squared. And now I'm just working backwards. Okay, so when I expand it, I have an x squared term, which is found here. That is my first term. Now my second term, 2x times 3 over 2. How much is this? Are you sure 6x? Uh, 6 over 2x, how much is that? It is recording. Yeah, I, I've hidden the, the, the little bar over there. Right, so if I were to expand this, 2x times 3 over 2, I will get 3x. Okay, which is found over here. And finally, the last term, I've got my 3 over 2 square, which is over here. Okay, so actually our, actually over here, they're all equivalent. The whole idea is to create a perfect square by introducing this term. And in order to make the left-hand side equal to the right-hand side, I have to subtract it away again. Okay? So we can simplify further, and we get x plus 3 over 2 square minus 9 over 4 plus 1. How much is that? Minus 5 over 4. Shall we leave it in decimal or should we leave it like this? Okay, fraction, improper fraction. Okay? So this is our final answer. So whenever you uh, do a try question, always check with the answer at the back if it is correct or not. Okay? So let's do one more question as an exercise on uh, exercise 2.3. We'll, we'll do it together in class. This is the O-level type of question. Okay, so let's do question 2D. Express again in a form x plus h squared plus k. So our question is x squared minus 9x plus 4. Okay, this time there is a negative sign for our coefficient of x. Let us take three minutes to do this. We'll stop at 0, 8, 1, 1. Is the answer correct? Check, check. Okay, I see that you evaluated this to become 81 over 4. It is not wrong, huh? but we don't have to expand, we don't have to evaluate this because the first three terms will give us the perfect square. It will therefore be x minus 9 over 2 squared. Okay, you can try it. You've done 2D? Okay. You have 25 more seconds.
Okay, time's up. Please look at the screen. All of you, please look at the screen. I've got some important points to go through. So now your, it is your turn to critique my work. Tell me whether it's right or wrong. Huh? Okay, uh, I'm, supposed to I'm supposed to complete the square for this. Okay, everything okay so far? Everything okay? Yes, who says it's okay? No. No? Why is it not okay now? So is it okay or not okay? They didn't say it's equal to zero? Did they say it is equal to zero? No. No, they didn't say it is equal to zero. Did any of you put it equal to zero? No. Yes, some of you put it equal to zero. You cannot let it be equal to zero for no reason at all. They are not telling you that this is an equation. Okay? They gave you an expression. They gave you three terms. It is not an equation. You are not expected to solve. Solving means to find the value of x such that it is true. This is an equation. This is an equation. This is an equation. You are not given an equation. You are told to complete the square. Alright? So now, uh, coefficient of x squared is 1. Let's proceed. Copy down the first two terms, x squared minus 9x. Now I'm going to add a certain special number. I'm going to subtract it away again. Plus 4. Okay, this part should be very mechanical after you have done um, after you practice a few times. So the question is what goes in the numerator? Negative 9. Okay. Shall we evaluate this to become 81 over 4? Is there a need to? So meaning this step x squared minus 9x plus 81 over 4 minus um, 81 over 4 plus 4. Is there a need to evaluate this? There's no need. Because I want it in this form. I want to be able to see that A, hey, this is going to be in my bracket. It is going to be in my perfect square. Like this. X minus 9 over 2 and I square it. Same thing over here. Okay, then I subtract my 81 over 4 and then I plus 4. So from here on, x minus 9 over 2, square. Um, 4 minus 81 over 4, how much is that? How much is that? 65 over 4. Okay, so you should have checked your answer and it should be correct. Okay? Are the steps complicated? Are they complicated? Can you handle it? Okay, very good. Now let's see what we can do after we have learned how to complete the square. Apparently, we can use completing the square to solve quadratic equations. Now, solve quadratic equations. We are trying to find values of x such that the equation is valid. Okay? For example, let's go to example 10 in our textbook, page 50. Solve. Now you are told to solve x squared minus 6x, sorry, plus 6x minus 7 equals to 0. I'll read the question, they say, solve it by completing the square. Is there any other way to do it without completing the square? What if I choose to do this? Okay, what happens if I do this? Is the answer correct? Yes. Is it correct? Yes. yes, it is correct. But did I follow the instructions? No. I didn't. What is this method called? No, what is this method called? This is called factorization. What are we learning? Completing a, Completing a square. What did they ask us to use? Completing a, Completing a square. So if you do this during the exam, although your answer is correct, it is absolutely right. You're going to get zero for this. Do you want that? Alright, so follow the instructions. Know every single method that we're going to teach you, okay? So we are not going to use this method anymore for this topic. We are now going to complete the square. Okay? Uh, so, let's start with the x squared term. Coefficient of x squared is 1. Let's copy down the first two terms. x squared plus 6x. Now I need to add a certain number divided by 2 squared, minus it away, and then I cannot forget my 7, my negative 7. Okay, so this is what I have. And fill in the blanks. What goes into the numerator? 
6. N6 over here. Continue first three terms will be combined to give us x plus 3 square minus 9 minus 7 equals to 0. Okay, so now we have x plus 3 square minus 16 equals to 0. What shall I do from this step onwards? Plus 16 on both sides. Yes, yes. That is the correct term. x plus 3 square equals to 16. Then what do we do from here? What do we do from here? Square root both sides? Okay, I, I tell you, uh, yes, you're right. We should square root both sides. But let me tell you what some students may do after they complete the square from here. From here, they went on to expand. x squared plus 6x plus 9 minus 16 equals to 0. So what happens if they expand it back again? Ah, then they're going to try and factorize it. Equals 0 and then they'll have x equals something and x equals to something. This will give you 0 marks. You are told to solve it by completing the square. So please don't do this. Okay, don't go and fact, uh, complete the square and then you expand it again. You are undoing all your work. So you've completed the square already. Add 16 to both sides. Take the square root of both sides. So x plus 3 equals to? Plus minus. Plus minus. Yes, there are two answers. And what is the value? 4. 4. So x must therefore be negative 3 plus minus 4, which is negative 7 or 1. You see it? Understand how this is done now? Okay, so let us do try it 10. No, not let us do. You will do it. Try 10, you are given 3 minutes. We will stop at 0820. Okay, I cheated you of 1 minute. But I think you can still do it. Very good. You did something different. Okay. Do you do this according to the working in example 10? Okay, do you fully understand what is happening? You see that my presentation is slightly different, but they're all the same. Where's your equal sign over here? Once done, check your answers. During the exams, you will not have um, answer key to check. Then what should you do to check your answers? You can substitute the x back inside or you can use your calculator to help you, right? Twenty more seconds. Oh. You are skipping too many steps. You are not able to process all this. Do it step by step. Okay, time's up. For try 10, solving it by completing the square. x squared plus 2x minus 15 equals to 0. Now this is an equation that is an equal sign in there. Left hand side is equal to 0. Okay? So to complete the square, we've got x squared plus 2x plus 2 over 2 square minus 2 over 2 square minus 15 equals to 0. x plus 1 square minus 16 equals to 0. x plus 1 square equals to negative 16. Is this correct? 
Is this, is this okay? Yes? No? Okay. Now, what happens if I make a careless mistake such as this? I hope you can see what a careless mistake is. Okay, what happens if this happens? How do we know that this is an error? Okay, the next step, we are going to try and square root, isn't it? Okay, what happens if you square root negative 16? Why not? Are you able to square root a negative number? No, you are unable to. So when this happens, when you suddenly end up with something square, which has to be positive, you end up with a negative number, it should come to you that if there's something wrong. Check your previous steps if there's an error. Okay, so I go back, oh, I, it can't be negative 16. Oh, I made a mistake over here. It should be positive 16. When I add 16 to both sides. Okay, so x plus 1 must be equal to plus minus 4. x is therefore negative 1 plus minus 4, which gives me negative 5 or 3. Okay, and then to check the answer, you can flip to the back of the textbook, or you can use your calculator to help you, or you can substitute these two values into our equation, our original equation, to see if the right-hand side does give you zero. Ken? Okay, um, let's see what else we can do. Okay, try 11. Again, you will have three minutes. Similar type of question, just that you're not going to get a very nice integer as the answer anymore. I don't understand your question. Uh, is it correct the step that I just said like, divide divide? What do you mean like, why are you you are not doing division? Okay, no no, I mean uh, I square root. Okay, hang on ah. Uh. Yeah. Should this be x minus one or x plus one? Minus. How do you decide? Okay. I don't know. How do you decide whether it is plus one or negative one? It is always going to be a plus over here. It's always going. This is supposed to be x square. You're supposed to copy down x square plus two x plus two over two square minus two over two square minus fifteen. Okay, you haven't written all those down yet. Then you will have x plus one square like this, not this. Does that answer your question? Okay, your time is up. Who needs more time for this? No? Okay. Now for try 11, again, completing the square. x squared minus 3x minus 5 equals to 0. I see some of you present this way. Okay? Uh, it is not something that I have shown, but it works. So you x squared minus 3x equals to 5. You chose to add 5 to both sides, 
so that you can complete the square on the left hand side. And we will arrive at x squared minus 3x plus over here the numerator will be negative 3. Same thing. It is still the value of the coefficient of x divided by 2 and we square it. Now on the right hand side we've got 5. Is the left hand side equal to the right hand side now? It is not equal because on the left hand side I added a negative 3 over 2 squared. So in order to make them the same, I must do the same for the right hand side. Okay? So this is what the textbook has shown you. Is it actually the same as what I've taught you? Yeah, it is the same because if I didn't choose to add 5 to both sides or if I didn't move the negative 5 to the other side, this is what we will end up with. Minus 5 minus this equals to 0. They are the same thing. Okay? Well, let me just show you what uh, some of you are doing. Okay, so from here, my first three terms gives me x minus 3 over 2 squared equals to 5 plus 9 over 4. How much is 5 plus 9 over 4? 29 over 4, thank you. So we have x minus 3 over 2 on the left hand side. Now, in order to solve this, I need to take square root on both sides. x minus 3 over 2 equals to plus minus square root 29 over 4. Can I square root 29 and get an integer? No, I can't. Do you want to evaluate it now? Do you want to use your calculator and show you what is the value of uh, square root 29 at this point in time? No, it's not going to help you. You're going to end up with many, many digits, many numbers. So our x is going to be 3 over 2 plus minus square root 29 over 4. This is the exact value. Now, we know that we should be rounding off our answers to 3SF. So use our calculator to help us over here. Root 29 divided by 2. That gives me 2.69 plus 1.5. So I get 4.1925. Or another answer. You can figure it out yourself. 4.19. Or the other answer. Yes? Uh huh. Oh, you mean you left it as the. You left your answer as 3 over 2 plus square root 29 over 2 or 3 over 2 minus square root 29 over 2. Is this it? Okay, in EMATS, huh? in EMATS, we should leave it as 3SF. In AMATS. Okay. Okay, so EMATS, 3SF, alright? Is uh, 4.191 one of your answers? Okay, excellent. Now it's time to do try it 12. One last part. You have three minutes again. We will stop at 8.32. You just write up to 5SF is enough already. Then you run off to 3SF. Try 12 uh, without looking at the example. Example 12. Sorry? You're not sure if it is 1 or? Now you are supposed to put in the coefficient of x. What is the coefficient of x? 1. 1, yes. That is what you should be putting in. Equals to? 
Yes. For a few more seconds. Is there a problem with this question? No problem. Can solve? Why is this minus 3 over 4? 1 minus 1 quarter should be 3 quarter, right? Okay, time's up. Let's see what this question is all about. Do you like this question? Yes. Yes, why? No answer. No answer? Math error? What's happening? Okay, let's see. Uh, I'm going to try and complete the square. So this gives me x squared plus x plus 1 over 2 squared minus 1 over 2 squared plus 1 equals to 0. So first three terms combined gives me x plus half squared minus 1 quarter plus 1 equals to 0. And we know that 1, 1 minus 1 quarter is actually sorry, um, yeah, 3 over 4. Okay, 1 minus 1 quarter is 3 over 4. Now I have to subtract 3 quarters on both sides. x plus half square equals to negative 3 over 4. Now I'm going to take square root on both sides. Is that a problem over here? Is that pro What's the problem over here? You cannot square root a negative number. I cannot square root a negative number. You cannot have, you cannot have a square where a is an unknown, whatever it is. You cannot have a square equals to a negative number. Do you know why? No, don't know why? Okay, let, let's, let's just think about this for a while. Why is it that a squared cannot be negative? What are some possible values of a? Throw me any random number. One, okay. One times one equals to one, okay. So this is positive times positive gives you positive, right? Okay, show me another negative two. negative 2. Okay, negative 2 times negative 2. That is actually negative, negative 2 squared, isn't it? Okay, we've got negative times negative. Actually, this gives me, what does this give me? Positive. positive. Is there any other possibility that when I square a number and I end up with a negative number? No, there, there isn't such a possibility, right? See, it could be a a could be positive. No, positive times positive gives me positive. A could be negative. Negative times negative gives me positive again. There's no way we're going to square something to get a negative value. Therefore, over here, we are going to conclude that there are no real solutions. Okay? Any term over here that you need me to explain? Yes. Uh, do we need to write this down? Yeah, there are no real solutions. But uh, I don't think we'll. I don't think you will actually see this during our O levels, <laughs> because we want you to be able to solve for a value of x. Okay, so uh, there are no real solutions. These five words. Any word you need me to go through. What is real? What is a real number? What's a real number? This is real over here. What if it is not real? Yes. Yeah, you can write this, yes. But you must come, you must show me this step. You must reach this step to show me that hey, something square goes to negative, it can't be real. Yes? Uh, I have not seen it come out in exams before, but this is for you to appreciate what is happening over here. Yes? Uh, yeah, there are no real solutions, so it cannot exist. But what does it mean by real numbers in mathematics? What if it is not real? Huh? It is fake? Okay, we have another word for it. It is called imaginary. Okay? We'll learn that when you go to JC. There are no real solutions. There are imaginary solutions. Okay, but 
Okay, so, so that's for next time. Now, um, when you are given a, an equation such as, such as this, x squared plus 4x plus 2 equals to 0, and you're told to solve it, okay? How many methods have you learned now? Two. What are they? Factorization and completing the square. If I just tell you to solve, can you use either? Yes. yes, you can use either or. Now, what is your preference? Factorization. Factorization. Do you want to try and factorize this? Okay, so you see, huh? you have two methods. You learn factorization. You are very confident with factorization already. Right? So I thought you completing a square. Now, can you use factorization for this? So what is your preference? Is this still factorization or completing the square? Or it depends? Okay, it depends. Uh, now, let me tell you what I think. I think factorization requires some guess and check work. Do you agree? Do you like to do guess and check in mathematics? I prefer not to. Like, I prefer everything to be um, in a certain manner. Okay? But guess uh, factorization can be faster, right? Yeah. It can be faster if you guess the correct numbers. That comes with experience, which you already have. But the sure method that will get you the correct answer will be completing the square. Okay? You have a choice, either to whichever you want to use. Sorry? Formula, okay, I'm coming to that. Now, wouldn't it be nice if I can for, for this kind of question, huh? Solve x squared minus 3x minus 5 equals to 0. Wouldn't it be nice if I can just summarize all of this and I just reach this answer straight away? Right? You see that the steps, they're all very repetitive. Every time I see a quadratic equation given, I will try and complete the square. I will take square root of both sides. I will have two answers. I will um, add 3 over 2 to both sides. You see, this sequence is repetitive. It happens all the time. Now, I'm going to attempt to consolidate everything into a formula. Okay? Remember the formula I told you in AMAX? Yes. Yeah, okay. Let's see how that came about. So, that is um, topic 2.4. We will start off with a general quadratic equation. AX squared plus BX plus C equals to 0. Okay, it is. Okay, Darius, please stand up. Please stand up. Stand up. Now, uh, A, B, and C are unknowns. They are constants. X square, we've got an X square term over there, we've got an X square, uh, sorry, another X term over there. So, any doubts about this equation? Do you understand fully what this is? Yeah, we see it in polynomials also, right? Now, if I want to solve for x, what are you going to do? I want you to solve. How do you solve this? Can I use factorization? No, I don't even know the values of a, b, and c. Then what should I do? Can I complete the square? Yes, yes I can complete the square. No. Sorry? Can I complete the square? Yes. yes, okay. What is the first step that I told you for completing the square? What do you mean to check? Coefficient of x squared is one. one. What do I have for the coefficient of x squared? What should I do now? Divide by a. How do I change the coefficient of x squared from a to become one? Okay, I can divide by a, right? Let's divide by a. X squared plus what? What is next? B over a, b over a x plus c over a equals to zero, zero divided by a is zero. zero. Okay, very convenient. What do I do next? See, uh, yeah, completing the square will give you an answer, if applicable. So what do I do next? X squared plus B over A squared, B over A X. Uh-huh. So you, you do see that I'm trying to complete the square now. I copy down the first two terms. So what do I need to add? Something over 2 square minus something over 2 square plus C over A equals to 0. Agree with this? Yes. All agree? Okay, now what is in this numerator? B over A. Ah, okay. So that's where we need to be very careful with how we write it. B over A, B over A. Okay, so far? Yes. 
Do you like to see this fraction in a fraction? No. No, I don't like it either. Can I uh, do a side working? B over A over 2. It's actually equal to B over A divided by 2, isn't it? Which is actually B over A times half, right? Right? Which is actually B over 2A, right? Is this nicer? Okay, let's replace all our B over A over 2 with B over 2A, since they are the same thing. B over 2A. B over 2A. Okay, now that we have this, what next? What happens after you add in that special number, then you subtract the special number away? Create your perfect square using the which terms? Okay, these three terms will give me x plus okay then minus oh, okay can I expand it already okay b square over 4a square plus okay does it look like it is helping am I getting closer to x already what should I do next then if I still want to solve for x Okay, uh, you mean bring this over here, is it? Yeah. So you mean you, we add b squared minus 4a squared and subtract coa on both sides. Yes. Okay, um, x plus b over 2a squared equals to b squared over 4a squared minus c over a, am I right? Yes. I've got a fraction minus a fraction on the right hand side. What should I do? Yes. This or this one? I've got a fraction minus a fraction. What should I do? Denominator should be the same. What should the denominator be? Okay. Uh, on this side, I have b squared, right? Right? And minus what? 4 a c. Is this correct? Okay. So I've got a square term over here. Remember, your goal is to still solve for x. So what's x? Now what should I do next? Okay. Square root, both sides. x plus b over 2a equals to? Plus minus square root b square minus 4ac over 4a square. Agree with this so far? Okay. Hey, my x is starting to be isolated. No, I only want x. What do I do? Minus. Minus what do I minus? Okay, minus b. Oh, sorry. x equals to minus b over 2a plus minus square root b square minus 4ac over 4a square. Am I right so far? Okay. Now I want you to consider this portion. I've got a square root of a fraction. Square root b square minus 4ac over 4a square. This is the same as square root b square minus 4ac over square root 4a square. Agree? Okay, can I square root the denominator? Yeah. Okay, so the denominator gives me 2a. Do you agree? Yeah. Let's replace that. Huh? So the square root goes to the numerator only, and the denominator is 2a. I've got a fraction plus minus another fraction. What should I do? Fraction plus fraction. What should I do? Make the denominator the same. Are they the same? Yeah. Ah, okay. So convenient. So I've got a denominator of 2a. First fraction, negative b plus minus square root b square minus 4ac. So this is my value of x. Anything wrong so far? Okay, so what have we actually done? I have formed the quadratic formula. This is our quadratic formula. Isn't this the formula that I asked you to memorize? Yeah. Ah, so now do you know how it works? Yeah. Where did this come from? Where did this formula come from? From completing the square. square. So we are not going to simply memorize this and just apply, apply, apply. We don't knowing why. Now we know why we are doing this. So next time when you come across a quadratic equation such as try it 13. Okay, solve 4x squared plus 7x minus 3 equals to 0 
You are told to solve this. What is your preference now? You've got factorization. You've got completing the square. You've got your quadratic formula now. What is your preference? Quadratic formula. Okay, quadratic formula. Uh, if you want to use it, then you need to memorize it. But now you know why it looks like that. Okay? For your quadratic formula, do we need to ensure that the coefficient of x squared is 1? No. No need. All I need to do is to compare whatever equation I'm given with ax squared plus bx plus c equals to 0. And I'll just use x equals to minus b plus minus square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a and I get my answer straight away. Okay, but you must be able to identify what are the values of a, b and c. Sometimes they are negative numbers. So you need to be very careful with your substitution into your quadratic formula. You must always show the substitution before you are given the method mark for the correct answers. Okay, so try it now. Very straightforward. Any questions? If you have any issues, please raise your hand, I'll come to you. You do not have to quote the formula, you don't need to write minus b plus minus square b square minus 4ac over 2a. Simply substitute them in. Don't waste time. So we need to write x equals to? Yes, you need to write x equals to because we are trying to solve for x over here. So x equals to minus something plus minus blah blah blah. Usually we put an X in front, right? Okay, now let me do the substitution. I see that many of you don't have problems with it, but your presentation um, requires a bit of work. So from here, I know that hey, X must be negative. 7 plus minus square root, 7 square minus 4 times 4 times negative 3 over 2 times 4. Okay. From here on, I will always copy down this. I'll just copy this down. I want to evaluate what is inside my square root because I want to have the exact value whenever I need to use it. So 7 square minus 4 times 4 times negative 3, 16 times 3 plus 49. Okay, so this is square root 97. Okay, do you have this? Yeah. I want to see this step. I also want to see your substitution. So these two are essential. I want to see the square root 97. I don't want you to straight away jump into the answers. From here on, it is easy for you to check back your work. Whether you made a mistake. Okay, square root 97. Minus 7 divided by 8, I get 0 0.35610, 0, or, sorry, 1, 1, so square root 97 again, this time, minus 7 divided by 8, I get negative 2.1061. Do you have these two? Are they the same? Okay, so we'll round them off. It becomes 0 0.356 or negative 2.11. 2, 3, SF. Are these the correct answers? Hmm? Did they say 2 dB? Oh, the question specified 2 dB? Oh, okay. If it is this specified, then we should follow the instructions. Yeah, okay. So these are the two answers. Any questions? Okay, then uh, we have covered. 
quadratic the quadratic formula. Okay, can I move on to the next topic? Yeah. Am I moving too fast or too slow? No. Or just right? Who needs me to slow down? Raise your hand. Who needs me to speed up? Ah, okay. So I get I take it that you are still most of you are still comfortable. Now on topic 2.5. Topic 2.5 is on fractional equations. This is a small topic, it is a simple topic, but it requires your foundations to be strong in primary school maths. Okay, Darius, you can sit down already. You, I forgot that you were standing because you didn't look like you were standing. Okay, this topic is on largely on combining fractions, and we see what happens to the numerator after that. So I'll just go straight into uh, try 16. Okay, so you have one example that you can read by yourself. Example 16. I will do try 16 now. Solve the equation 3x minus 1 over 2x plus 5 equals to x minus 3 over x plus 4. Okay. Here we have to solve, meaning I want to find values of x such that left hand side equals to right hand side. Okay? In lower sec, when you had a fraction equals to another fraction, what would you do? Cross multiply. Okay, you do the cross multiply, right? So you take out your pencil, <coughs> you draw arrows like this, isn't it? Do you do that? Yes. No, then what do you do? Just, just, uh, just mentally know what's happening and do it, right? Okay, fine. And this is what we should arrive at. 3x minus 1, x plus 4, equals to x minus 3, 2x plus 5. Is this correct? Yeah, no. Is this correct? Yeah. Huh? Is that a problem? Who thinks there's no problem? Who thinks there's a problem? What's the problem? Oh, you mean, you mean over here? Is there a difference if I don't put it? Yes, yes there's a difference. Right, Kevin? Is there a difference? Yes, there's a difference. Because if I don't have the bracket, it's going to be 3x minus x minus 4 on this side. Now, if I have the bracket, it is going to be 3x squared uh, plus 12x minus x minus 4. Okay, that is the difference. Huh? You must have the bracket. And I'm emphasizing on this because I've seen ma too many students who leave their answers like this, oh, sorry, who leave their working like this, but they know, they know they were supposed to expand everything. So you know what happens? They do it. They leave it as the working over here, and then they have 3x squared plus 12x minus x minus 4 equals to 2x squared plus 5x minus 6x minus 15. They have this. And they continue and they get the correct answers. Then Mr. Wong comes and, oh, this one is wrong. Since you don't get your meta mark, your answer mark, zero, even though they are correct. Okay? If you don't get your meta mark, you will not get your answer mark, even though your answers are correct. So, to rectify this, we must have the brackets. Can? Okay, so now, what shall we do? After I have expanded everything, what shall we do? You see, we have uh, x squared term over here, we have x squared term, we have got x, 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 and a constant, constant. Would you like to group them all together? Okay, let's group that all together. Minus 2x squared on both sides. I'm going to end up with x squared. 12x minus x is 11x. 11x uh, minus 5x, that'll be. Okay, this one is 11, 11x, right? Minus 5 will be 6. Plus 6 will be 12x. Okay, plus 12x. I've got negative 4. 
plus 15. How much is that? It goes to zero, right? Okay, when you see this, you should be very happy already. Because you can choose to complete the square, you can choose to factorize if you can. You can choose to use the quadratic formula. Which one do you want to use? Uh, I would like to use quadratic formula. Okay, so x equals to minus 12 plus minus square root, 12 square minus 4, 1, 11, over 2 times 1. Now, when you use your quadratic formula, some of you, I don't know whether you are trying to save ink, you end up with your formula like this. What does this mean? Why are you, square, why are you trying to square root over here? 12. 12 square minus 4. So what about these two? Are you trying to square root them also? Should we include them under the square root? Yes. yes. Include them under the square root. I will penalize for that also. Okay? So, um, 1, 4, 4, minus 44. Oh, it's 100. I get negative 12 plus minus square root 100. Over 2. Are you happy to see square root 100? Yeah. Why? You know, when you see a perfect square inside this square root, uh, uh, with time, in time to come, you should realize that ah, if, I could, if it is going to be a perfect square inside, I could have factorized it. I could have. Some of you realize that we could have factorized this with 11 and 1. Okay? So, regardless, let's just continue. Here I have negative 12 plus 10 over 2 or negative 12 minus 10 over 2, which gives me negative 1 or negative 11. Okay, same answers that you will get if you use your factorization or completing the square. Any questions? Any questions? No? Then, you know what? Actually, this is all for topic 2.5. Yeah, you are supposed to solve uh, equations involving two fractions. But, but there are types of questions which you are not exposed to yet. I'll just guide you through try it 18. Just guide only because you are equipped with all the skills necessary to handle it already. So try it 18. Okay, hang on. Huh? No, 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 no. This is not a math. Okay. We are trying to solve this. We are... During this lesson, I will not solve it. Okay. We'll just talk about the steps we have to take to solve it. I've got a fraction minus a fraction equals to a fraction. What does the primary school math tell you about these two? Make the denominator the same. Can you do that? Yeah. So you combine into one fraction where you have x minus 2, x plus 3. Then you have x, x minus plus 3, minus x minus 2, right? Then the right-hand side is still the same. Doesn't change. Okay, what now? Huh? Oh, they are the same denominator. You notice that. If the denominators are the same, and then the fractions are equal, what does that tell you about the numerator? One more time, huh? If the two fractions are the same, then the denominators are the same. What does that tell you about the numerators? Same. Must be the same. La. So you just solve this law. Easy? Can, right? Okay, not going to show you the answer. Now another type. Try it 19. We've got 2 plus 3x minus 1 over x plus 1 equals to 5 over x minus 2. What does your primary school maths tell you about these two? Make, make what the same? I make the denominator the same. Is it difficult? Okay, so we've got 2 times of x plus 1 over x plus 1, right? So we can combine. And then we will end up with a fraction equals to another fraction. Right? And you can solve it again. Okay? So that's all for today's lesson. We have covered until 2.5 already. We are only left with 2.6 and 2.7 for our test. Okay, so we should be able to finish this in either two or three more lessons. Yes, then we'll move on back to AMATS already. Okay? You should be wondering, hey, where are the homework questions? Huh? I'll be posting the homework questions online. 
you will just refer to it and do and submit on Monday. Any questions? Yes. Oh, because I haven't see, I, I want to reduce the number of homework questions. I have planned a lot of homework questions, but I think you can do with fewer questions. Okay? Any other questions? No. Yes. Yeah, you'll be drawing grass or 2.7. Why? Why? Uh, you will be drawing grass in the exams also. Okay, class 10. Thank you, class. Thank you, Have a nice day.